Let's look at the iPhase manual and DVD from Z Health. This builds on the R Phase series. And in R Phase, what we were trying to do was just kind of recapture basic movement by working head to toe and mobilizing each joint. I Phase, the I is for integration, starts to take the basic vocabulary you developed in R Phase and sort of apply it. You're getting closer and closer towards more athletic movement or more real life movement. Right? A lot of where this training mentality comes from, the template of how the body moves, comes from reverse engineering high-level athletes and seeing what they start to do. So when you start to look at these I-phase exercises, what you're going to see is very much stuff that looks more like sports. Right? We don't quite go into it with all the speed and power and movement of what we do in S-phase, which is going to be much more sports-oriented, but for sure you're expanding the vocabulary that you developed in our phase. So let's talk a little bit about what you're actually integrating, right? Integration sounds great, but what does that actually mean? In these exercises, right, in the set you've got the teaching, the instructional DVD, and then you've got the follow-along practice, just like in our phase. And in the manual, a big manual, you've got every drill broken down move by move and piece by piece, and then you have a training progression laid out 18 weeks or something like that, 18, 21 weeks, that's going to actually take you through all the material that's in here. So what I think is really nice about this combination of the manual and DVD is you get tons of information all at once, but there's a really systematic way to train it. So integration, what does that mean beyond what we did in the basic head-to-toe series in our phase? There are four different things that we're going to do in I phase that are going to get more complicated than um, what we did in R phase. The first is that we're going to be doing the drills in different lunge positions, what we call lunge positions. So stepping forward, stepping back, stepping to the side, and having one leg weighted and one leg unweighted. Right? There's a diagram here in the beginning of the manual. See the compass shape? So these are all the different ways you could be stepping, shifting to one side, shifting to the other side. Managing, having the same degree of body control over all the different little moving parts when you're in these lunge positions requires a greater degree of balance and coordination. So you're taking something that if you jumped from just the neutral leg position, standing on both feet under your hips in our phase, to doing athletics or sports at high speeds, you have this big gap where one of the beautiful things about the way that I-phase is structured is that you have a very clear progression for building this up. And I keep saying sports, but you really have to understand this as real-life movement, right? All the squatting, shifting, stepping, bending, everything you do to get you through your day smoothly and comfortably is covered through these lunge positions. So on one leg, on the other, forward, back, side. You get the lunge positions. You've got more rotation. And think about this for a second, what rotation does to the soft tissue in the body. Whether you're talking about trunk rotation or the legs through different foot placements, rotating the legs in, rotating the legs out, it winds the tissue in the body. And so your joints are under different load and different stress when you do the same movement in a wound position. A lot of what you actually see for people in terms of injuries or chronic pain, things like that, that's movement related is the fact that there's a soft tissue winding going through the body that puts funny torque on a different joint. So by actually practicing in wound positions, you do two things. One, when you get all twisted and tangled up, you don't get as lost, right? You know where you are in space, even if your body's in a funny position. So there's that sense. But also in terms of looking at chronic movement patterns, movement problems, you can do some unwinding when you start to train and practice in these wound positions. So if you're always wound this way, getting used to moving when you're wound this way can undo some of that torque in the body. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that the movements themselves will get more complicated. In our phase, you'll see a lot of straight line movement and then a lot of circles, right? That helps you master just up and down, left and right, gets you oriented. The circles, you start to have more control over the movement. And in I-phase, what you start to introduce are a lot of figure eights. So, you know, 
I see this one all the time. If you don't, if you just go to the figure eights or people, you see this in Tai Chi, people just go into the big shapes of the movements. What happens is you actually skip places in the movement where you're bound or you're stuck or you literally can't feel what's going on. So if you haven't gone through straight lines, circles, and then figure eights and spirals, and you jump right to trying to do figure eights and spirals, you end up with these huge gaps. And if you picture sort of like night photography with a really slow shutter speed, where it catches like the movement of a comet or the moon or something like that, you see the arcing of the line going through the sky. Same thing here, if you, if you did the same thing with somebody doing a figure eight in their shoulder and they never actually fixed one of those little arcs in the circle or the straight line, they really actually can't move it through a, a linear range of motion, you'd see the big gap when they try to do the whole integrated thing that you wouldn't see if you just only ever did figure eights, figure eights, figure eights. So I hope that makes sense, right? We're, we're jumping up a level of complexity in terms of how we're moving the joints. The final thing that you'll start to pay attention to in these eye phase, in this eye phase series, is you'll start to go, this is a little bit in our phase too, but you can make, you just have much more to work with in eye phase, you start to go back to speed, right? Whenever you teach these exercises to people, everybody tends to move at a default speed. And that's actually an important part of what we're trying to train when we're trying to get better control over the body. So you wanna be able to have different gears because often stuck spots and places that are off in your movement that eventually sort of take away from the fluidity and the flow of your form, your movement, right, come because you're only used to moving at one speed. So you'll have a default internal speed, and what these exercises are great for are targeting piece by piece to teach you how to move at different speeds in different parts of the body. Now that doesn't just mean really fast or really, really slow. Most people will kind of gravitate towards one end of the spectrum or the other. But they're actually, we talk about four different speeds in Z-Health, where you want to be able to go really, really fast. You know, if you were playing full speed in a game or something like that, you want that sports speed. But you want to have a couple gears below that. You want to have a just kind of regular coordinated speed. You want to have a slow speed, which becomes your kind of normal for these exercises. And then you want to slow it down even more. So you get into that a little bit more, and there's some really great tricks you can use with the metronome to try to get the right pacing and the right speed and learn how to change gears between the different speeds really quickly. So that's kind of what's, what's involved in the I-phase manual. Again, we're building off of our phase, making the movements more complex, right, in more challenging positions, working the body at new angles because of the different positions, and working the body through different speeds, which also unlocks stuck spots in the body. So don't take on I-phase until you've worked on R-phase. But once you take on I-phase, as, as you graduate from R-phase, there's so much more you can do with it. So that's why I recommend this as the second major building block in your movement practice.